Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for some autograph shenanigans. We have a lot of bad actors in the autograph space these days, and we're going to be covering a whole lot of that. Now, we have two very important topics to touch on today. One is CGC totally, extremely embarrassing themselves with their new program, their new signature program, their new signature authentication program. And then we have BGS, and the BGS stuff is extremely scary. Be careful out there, guys. Do not buy autographs unless you are absolutely certain that they were signed, that they are approved, that there's proof that it actually happened and if there is proof that it happened make sure you're checking that proof because we've seen some we've seen some proof that wasn't real proof now the grading companies as per usual they are looking to make a buck and if they can grade some stuff if they can put their name on some stuff if they can put your cards in plastic they will take your money to do so and sometimes they overreach sometimes they don't just say you know what? Maybe we shouldn't authenticate this. Sometimes they probably don't have an expert who is looking this stuff over because this example that we have on screen here is the most embarrassing thing I have possibly seen in the last year from a grading company. This is this is insane that this thing got put in a slab. Not only is it insane that it got put in a slab by CGC and their new partner JSA who authenticates their autographs, uh, but also the fact that it's it this is this is the worst possible Ken Sugimori. I'm going to I'm going to have to say that it's likely a forgery because it it certainly looks like one this is this is an absolute mess if you compare it to any known example not only that but again when you're putting this in your marketing they spell the artist's name wrong if you can't spell the artist's name right on your marketing material on your slab that you made for marketing material I don't I why should anyone trust your opinion on whether or not this is real and again Guys, it is very difficult to prove that something isn't real, but when something looks like a forgery, it better have so much provenance. It better have it better have a video of the artist signing this thing. It, it, it needs proof. This does, I don't know where they're going to pull the proof out from for this bad boy, but what the hell? And yes, they did delete it. So thank you to everyone that takes remember, take screenshots of everything. Uh, maybe the most embarrassing way that you can potentially launch a new program. Now we have Wooter Boodle, and yes, we're going to touch on where we know his name from. Uh, we <laughs> we have that was fast for the record. Sugimori is just a bad fake. Jordan isn't a decent fake. Mahomes is a known forgery style. Uh, so again, picking it apart, and uh, I'm I'm gonna say that uh, Wooter Boodle here is likely correct. This was PSA's previous authentication expert on the old autographed end of things before he got removed from the company fired from the company allegedly for cutting up shipping documents that were sent he also ran events helped to run events for signings somehow some shipping documents had some signatures on it he chopped those up without the artist's permission without the artist knowing that he was doing so put them on his cards brought them to work had them graded by psa his employer uh whether or not it was him or another person that was working there under him potentially that authenticated this bad boy still wrong still pretty damn wrong and they they fired him supposedly for doing so so maybe he's an expert in the space maybe he just did some bad stuff I don't know what's going on here, but it seems like there is a lack of expertise from the grading companies on what is real, what is not real. The, the, the burden of proof, the proof that should be necessary for a lot of this stuff when you have so many bad actors, it needs to be there, please. And it gets worse. It's just going to get worse here as we look at the BGS stuff a little bit later on in the video. We have PKM.grade who says gorgeous and authentic Suga Mori autograph. So yes, it's, it's supposed to be an I, not an A. Stop paying minimum wages and hire some professionals, please. And by the looks of this, I, I should say um, thank you very much to Shake and Bake from Discord who sent me this bad boy. And again, guys, screenshot. Screenshot everything you need to. From the looks of this, there was also a reel. So I can only imagine uh, what other juicy tidbits were, were within this. Again, the internet is forever. If you're a grading company, and even if you're half ass, even if you're going to make some mistakes at times, pre proofread your marketing material for the love of God. I should also note that they now have super duper lack of transparency, uh, <laughs> certain numbers on their slabs, because you wouldn't want anyone linking anything back in the past. The uh, the certain numbers were very helpful in identifying the owners uh, and potential fraudsters that may or may not be submitting cards through CGC. So 
why doesn't this have a real cert number on it? CGC, please, we would love to know why you have to hide that. Uh, maybe you should have hid the fact that you can't spell the artist's name correctly. Whoop de doo. So here we have it. CGC X JSA autograph service announced showcases questionable can Suga Sugamori in quotations because it's spelled wrong auto. And we have PFM here on E4 who made this post. Again, if you're going to get into autographs, do not, uh, if you're going to get into anything, do not rely on the grading companies. Even if you want graded cards, even if you love graded cards, even if your favorite graded cards are by ABC LMNOP grading, I don't give a shit. Do what you got to do. If it's a waste of money, it's a waste of money. If it's not, if you can make money off of it because you're you're getting tens because you're a ten daddy to the extreme, go for it. But you need to be the expert. Do not rely on the grading company. Please and thank you. That's it. End of rant. Now, we have uh, grading fees uh, plus a fee. Oh, you get to pay some extra, extra fees here. Sick, nasty. Um, holy moly. They're making some they're making some money. Not to be outdone by BGS, the Pokemon example they show is this Ken Suga Mori. Um, very interesting. It I again, if for some reason Ken Sugamori may, maybe he he broke his hand that day when he was signing this, but to me, this does not look anything like any of the real examples. Um, and as PFM says here. I really don't like making definitive statements about the authenticity of autographs since there can be so much variability. However, I can comfortably say that there are many features of this autograph that are off and would concern me enough to not put it into a slab. Uh, consider the com comparison below. So that not just not put it into a slab and require more evidence that it was actually signed by the artist, but also the fact that you're using this for your marketing material. But is it a surprise when you can't be asked to fucking Google the name of the artist? I, like, blows my absolute mind. Not to mention it's written on the card. You don't even need to Google it. Just look at the fucking card. All right. Excuse my language. I'm just, it, it blows my mind that, uh, my God, and I know, some people are going to be like, oh, it's not the grader's fault. It's not the grading, the grading company. This is, an, this is an exception. There's a lot of examples we're going to look at today. And I'm, I'm telling you, if it was me, if I were you, if this was my money, if I was buying autographs, if I was an autograph collector, I am not even not even coming anywhere close, even if it looks fucking awesome. There's some examples here that look really awesome, yet they're fake. We have proof on some of them. Stay tuned. Now, <laughs> example after example, none of them look even close to this. Again, it, it does look like they, they tried, to, tried to copy the Pokemon there, but... Not a whole else else that is looking 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 right there. Again, I'm not making a definitive claim, but it's strange to choose strange choice to lead the marketing with a, such a disconcerting example. I would be interested in seeing these scans, but the cert number is not real. That's the thing too. That is that is greasy. That's a, that greasy on top of greasy. The fact that they're trying to hide their marketing material when in the past they've worked with shady individuals who allegedly shady shady in my opinion, individuals who got banned by their competition, they're advertising for these individuals, they're gonna they're gonna try to hide stuff in the marketing materials. It's bad enough that some of their articles are like, oh yeah, we don't want to disclose where this came from or who it came from, but it's trust us, bro. Trust us. We we just believe we're the we're the authority here. Don't trust anything. Trust yourself. Make sure you know the full story on whatever you're buying. When it needs provenance, when it needs the full history behind it, like something, like these examples, do not trust. Do not trust the grading company. Don't trust. I don't give a shit if it's Matt Quinn that pulled it straight out of his butthole. Do not trust. Do your own work. Do your own investigation. If it's your own card, if you knew where it came from, if you had it signed, different story. If you're just blindly trusting the fact that it's graded by one of these companies, you're probably in for a bad time. Because we're seeing some serious mistakes here. Some serious, question, seriously questionable items. Like, beyond what we're looking at here. Yes, the CGC thing, CGC thing is embarrassing. But when you have examples like this, we have BGS grades and altered. We've covered this before. Pokemon autograph hides my comment telling them what they did. So BGS, basically, this is a wipe signature. Uh, there's proof that at the event, again, PFM, I think, has helped with a lot of these events. Uh, and people that have worked at them can chime in and can say when everything's on record, which it should be, who got things signed, how it was addressed, why it was signed. I think with the signing events, maybe they offer a service that is, you know, extends beyond um, 
getting the autograph, but also the proof that you were there, the proof that you had it addressed, you had it personalized to a certain person. This card was wiped. The event did not allow cards that weren't wiped. This was wiped, and we've seen that before with Ultimate Poke Flute, who tricked him and his him and his his buddy, Rob Rob Divin Divin. Uh, they were they were in grease grease balling. Uh, we had an artist that was in bad health. They had a bunch of stuff signed for free. They were pretending to be, his, to be his friend. They were pretending that they were going to keep it. The artist even explicitly asked them, hey, please don't resell these. These are for you only. This is a gift from me to you. And what do they do? They wipe off the personalizations. They get them graded, and they sell the cards. He lets on that he's not selling the cards. The same kind of idiot that makes his kids stand in line uh, so he can get extra signatures and everything else. Again, just grease ball, super grease ball moves to, to make an extra buck deceiving people uh, and shame on PSA for not deactivating all of those certs in their entirety. Again, when you're buying signatures, you need to be very careful. Now, I reached out to a small poke and he has had multiple people contact him saying that they picked up some great, some not great, some signed cards from Japan here on uh, Mercari, Japan. Be careful on the old Mercari. Be careful on the old Yahoo Japan. If you're buying stuff, it is a very, very, it, it's it's flea market style. You need to know what you're looking at. You need, you need to be very careful. There are counterfeits. There are people that will send you a booster box that's filled with apple juice or rocks or whatever else. And in this example here, we have a bunch of people who purchased signed cards. Uh, and it is the belief of Swolpoke and, and other people who have looked at these, other people that are well-versed in the space, uh, that these are forgeries. And it wouldn't surprise me if they were. Again, are these getting graded by BGS? So you might need to be on the lookout for a lot of this stuff. Be careful out there, guys. If you want signed cards, if you're in the signed card market, if you're a signed card aficionado, make sure that you have every single detail of where the signature came from and not just a pl plastic case that a grading company can charge money for. Be careful. Best case scenario, you get it signed yourself, especially if it has personalization on it. That way the artist can make it out to you and you don't have to have two Ash, two Trainer, two Butt Sucker 69 on the card when that's not the handle that you go by or the name that you have. Now, the most dangerous part. Now that we've touched on a lot of that, we have BGS has authenticated some scary good forgeries and a few that look pretty bad. Now, we do have proof on some, not all. Again, it is very difficult to prove that uh, that the artist was just not having a bad day signing with the wrong hand or signing, signing in the dark. Who knows? Again, there's variance. It is it is subjective, but when it looks bad, when there is some some proof lending to it being a counterfeit forgery, Autograph, please, please just don't grade it. Do not grade it. BGS, and a lot of this is probably coming from the same people, and you'll see this stuff is going to be sold through auction houses. Why is it going to be sold through auction houses, you might ask? Why are they going to Why are they going to pump it through Golden? Why are they going to pump it through PWCC and everything else? And that's why we're going to put pressure on. We're going to expect the auction houses to go above and beyond because the grading company often will not. If there's something that's suspected fake, if there's anything that's questioning the authenticity, I don't give a shit if the cert number is active, active, deactivated, potential forgery, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Again, be responsible if you're selling stuff, if you're the smallest consigner of all time, or you're the, the biggest one on the block. You need to be responsible. You need to be looking out for your customers, the people that are bidding on that stuff, not just the person that's trying to slime that shit through your through your consignment service so no one can trace it back to the same individual sale, sell, selling uh, forged or potentially forged autographs over and over again. Same thing with the video that we touched on recently. I guess I shouldn't have an example of that, but uh, we have PSA that was grading. Uh, they would just call it a trading card instead of Magic the Gathering card because it was a counterfeit Magic the Gathering card that was signed, which maybe wasn't even signed. If it's a counterfeit card that's being signed, I kind of doubt that it was actually signed by the artist. But again, Regardless of whether it was or not, uh, they shouldn't be encapsulating. It's irresponsible uh, and it's a disservice to everyone that like banks on the fact that the grading company is trying to do the right thing, that they're that they're you know in the best interest of their their customers, which are the people that are inexperienced or are relying on that opinion uh, to know if something's real or not. And you should never. That in my opinion is that their opinion is worth less than your opinion. 
put that on a t-shirt. All right. Below are some snippets of what I find wrong with the Crystal Charizard, but I also believe the other BGS authenticated slabs. And we're looking at an article by Slo Swopoke here, uh, a, an autograph enthusiast uh, who is pretty well versed and has pointed out a lot of very, very concerning uh, points about these autographs that are pumping out of BGS. Pikachu, Charizard, Venus are, are also forgeries. And that's the thing too. Good luck getting your money back. Even if you if if you if the thing looks bad as hell, even if PSA wants to claim they have a guarantee, are they gonna do anything? Unless there's like there has to be not they don't need proof. They don't need to show you any proof that the uh, that the autograph on there is authentic. But you need to you're gonna have to show them the person you're gonna have to show them video footage of the person signing this and that it isn't the artist in order to get your money back. I the, you were gonna have to jump through some serious hoops. I would in my opinion, you'd be very surprised. I'd be very surprised uh, if they kind of uh, even even stuff with the most concerning of information coming out about it, whether like whether or not they're probably not going to do anything for you. Again, it costs them money, so they don't want to. It's like insurance. It's like anything else. Uh, good luck. Whenever assessing if an autograph is authentic, there's always room for inconsistency since no two autographs are 100% alike. And that's the thing too. When you when you show them that something was wiped, there was an autograph that was altered by Poke Flute, and you can show them all the before and after examples, and they still don't deactivate them because it's going to cost them money. Shame on them. Shame on all of these companies for doing this with uh, pretending to have expertise that they don't. In this case, however, there are too many things either off or fully wrong for it to be authentic. So here we go. We got the red flags. We got the, the signatures here. And again, yes, there's going to be some variance, but when stuff is drastically different and or looks like it's identical to another signature uh, to the point that it's concerning. So here we go. We got card in question. Uh, and you can see here uh, at the same date, the same event. Uh, in a very different handwriting when you have the the two not even not even close to the same two you have the again people are going to have tendencies when they're signing things or when they're writing things that they're going to do their letters and numbers in certain ways uh, and here where the closing of the zero is not even close to the same spot concerning definitely concerning uh, and uh, you can see the nines here not really matching up. You can see the 16 here not really matching up. Did they copy something? Yeah, probably. All right, now, next one. We have the K with the hoop on the top of the K, which is not right. Uh, and just the way that the letters go in here, the O uh, looking a whole lot more slanted than the legitimate autographs down at the bottom. We got the S, not quite right. Next one, here we have it. And a lot of the times too, if it's somebody that uh, is not a Japanese that is that is forging this stuff, you'll see some pretty big mistakes uh, just because somebody's not used to writing in Japanese. The same way when there's personalizations in English uh, from a Japanese artist, oftentimes their English handwriting, their letters are very distinguishable. They don't look like the, the average person's handwriting, especially for an artist. I mean, I guess artists don't necessarily have to have the cleanest of signatures. Um, but uh, when you compare it to their the Japanese characters, um, night and day, because they're not used to writing that. Uh, and they're probably just looking at it and copying it the same way that a lot of this stuff. So we can see here just just giant flaws and stuff that should be questioned by the grading company to the point that they don't authenticate it, even if it is real, if they don't have absolute proof. And if they do have absolute proof, uh, and if there's providence behind it, I don't understand why uh, these companies haven't at this point in time uh, just put information, whether it's on the slab, if there's no room on the slab. Again, they have a web, a web page dedicated to each one of these individual cards that could say what event it was signed at, who it was signed by, Etc. Etc. Whether it was a stand in line thing, whether it was a private event, anything like that, that could all be published there and would lend pro providence. The the require the the required details to know that something is real and for someone to make a sound decision on whether or not it is real. Again, it's it's just it blows my mind. So next up, more scary, extra scary. We're in the scary department. We have below is another example of either extremely good forgery or the use of something like an auto pen slash tracing device being used. 
The sketches and auto personalization are all nearly identical and placed nearly identically in the exact same position as its authentic counterpart. Uh, so yeah, this is scary because if you don't know the other one exists and why there should be probably a public record of all of the ones that do exist so that you can make a nice little comparison here. And if anyone is asking what the hell is an auto pen tracing device, we got some nice examples here that Swalpoke posted onto his Instagram. Uh, if you're in the market for autograph, you should probably be following, following Swalpoke if you're an autograph aficionado. I get it. It's cool. I, I have some autographs myself, uh, but they were kind of designated or personalized to myself, and I wouldn't want one that wasn't. I get it. There are people that uh, either don't want to go to events, can't go to events. Maybe the person is not signing anymore and they really want a signature from that artist. But if you are, if you are one of those people, you need to be so, so careful. Again, I would never trust anything unless I knew exactly where it came from, who it came from, uh, and that it was possible that it came from the actual artist themselves. And ideally, you're there standing in front of the artist and the artist signs it for you. It's just like the best case scenario. I get it. Ken Sugimori, not possible. Probably not going to happen. People love the old Ken Sugimori artwork. So here's the auto pen. Essentially, we have uh, similar to like a 3D printer. Uh, it's on uh, on rails here where it will use a robot uh, to uh, clone signatures. Here it is signing Ken Sugimori's autograph. Now we have the uh, tracing device that Swalpo posts, posts here. Again, if you flip the image on your phone, then you would get to the correct side image. And that's the, the reason why we're pointing out this is because if something is that close, it's, it's scary. We've seen this before. We've seen this with a few examples on artwork, on forged artwork, uh, with forged signatures that you, you can overlay it and it, it's the exact same signature in the exact same way. And that's just not going to happen. So when it's too perfect, when it's too good to be true, then there's concern. But then also, these they need to have a database. If you're if you're somebody that's at one of these companies, whether it's Beckett, whether it's PSA, whether it's CGC, wherever it might be, not only do you need the graded examples, you need to have like just an encyclopedia of examples of what exists out there, so you can match it up. You should know what events offered which sketches. You should have you, Alex should be on that speed dial. And we'll get into that in a second here, uh, where he will kind of blow the lid off uh, what is a proven forgery uh, in a minute here. So be even if it looks good, even if you think it looks good, even Beckett looks, thinks it looks good, be very, very careful. Now we have fake authentic here. Another example here uh, where they put the old ash on the card instead of Edison. And again, every single little pen mark here, identical, scary identical. And if you don't know this one exists because you're not an expert at a grading company or you're not an expert and you work at the grading company, then maybe you don't know that other one exists. Maybe you don't take that into consideration. But after this, after this comes out, after this information comes out, yes, mistakes can be made, especially in this realm. If your boss, if you're working at BGS, and there's probably only one person that's doing this, there was only one person that was grading Pokemon at before the pandemic, according to a the, an employee, an ex employee at BGS. So I can I can imagine there's only one person that's authenticating this stuff. Are they just googling images of what it should look like? Are they taking all this stuff into consideration? So we have Auto Pen, everything placed nearly identically. That is terrifyingly identical. We got a little bit of a hook on the seven, but even every everywhere, even on the card, it's kind of cloned here. Same card, same location for all of this stuff. Be careful. Be careful out there, guys. This example below is just flat out wrong and so bad in so many ways. I'm not sure who is authenticating at BGS, but it appears they'll slab just about anything. So this one just being called out for not looking correct whatsoever. I mean, I don't, I think it's to the point that even if it looks perfect, it shouldn't be authenticated unless there is the entire history of where it came from, where it was signed, who, who got it signed. If they want to put their name on it, sure. Is somebody going to put their name 
credentials on something that they had signed, if they didn't have it signed, and someone exposes them for, for such. They just keep rolling. BGS is now 100% not to be trusted with their opinion. I, I don't think you should trust any of the companies. Again, their opinion, is it worth any more? Then I, I would argue that if you reach out to Swolpoke, to PFM, to Alec, about any of these signatures, their opinion is more valuable than that of whoever's doing this at the grading companies. It might give you a public opinion. And th this is important. This is going to come into play here in a second. We have the ash on there. You can see the English handwriting is less than spectacular on the Jimeno Auto because she's not English. She does not write in English. The ash doesn't line up with what she says. So here we go. We got Charizard saying he's going to sub some cards. And this is scary stuff. Again, if it's you, if you, you got it signed, by all means. And we've seen some, some examples that people got them signed that had proof of where it was signed, how it was signed, uh, and they got rejected. So it's just maybe they, 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 is it a coin flip at this point? All right, we have Alec who says, again, Alec runs a lot of these signing events, has seen a lot of these signatures, has worked alongside a lot of these artists. And this is what he has to say. And this is some proof that we have forgeries being graded at BGS. There is a video, uh, there's a video recording of every item that was signed that day. The card on the right is easily identifiable and was signed at the Q&A panel on the 26th. The card on the left was not signed at the event. The personalization has two issues with it. Nobody received the personalization ash. There you go. There's proof. Fake. Deactivate the cert. BGS. I don't even know. Does anyone... I know there's always been jokes about like how many people work at BGS and that it's like basically no one. But like... Have they ever have they ever done the right thing and deactivated the cert? Anytime I've seen examples of stuff that like has proof that it's trimmed, they never do anything about it. Then the consignment companies usually bank on the fact, oh, BGS says it's real. It's not our problem. It's 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 the same like blame game. And the person who made this didn't or have a reference for him. And uh, he made Maru's English handwriting. That's not what it looks like. I'm also seeing an odd similarity between the ash on the Reshiram and the ash on the Charizard a couple posts earlier. So that's the thing too, is BGS, the grading companies are going to have information on the people that are submitting these. So when you have a fake, it should be on them. If you want to grade autographs, if you want to, if you want to protect consumers and add value to these cards, you should be the ones that are looking into this. You have the information of who submit this stuff. And if it's somebody that submit fakes, you damn well should be looking into and providing information on like, hey, be on the lookout for this. X, Y, Z. Now, whether that's company policy, if, or if you need to work with law enforcement in order to crack down on it, it's on you. If you want to provide that service, you want to be the, uh, the authenticator, then you need to protect the people that are buying into your plastic. The only letter that differs between them is the lowercase s. I won't bother with this Charizard above, as it's much more obvious forgery. Having directly seen hundreds of Mr. Saito's autographs over the years, it appears to me that there are enough factors noted above to make them at least questionable and shouldn't have passed authentication without additional evidence. It could be down to variants, but as those variances stack up, the burden of proof should also increase. Exactly this. Exactly this. And if you if it's proven that something is an auto pen, I mean they got to be on the lookout for the auto pen stuff because uh, if they're just automatically going to grade it. And the thing is, if somebody gets away with this, if someone forges something, if someone auto pens something, if someone's copying some other known real examples, and they get away with it, they're just going to keep doing it. And if BGS hides them and keeps grading them, and then they pump them through whatever consignment company, even if one of the consignment companies mans them, they just go to the next one then it's it's harder to trace back to them. They, they're going to add as many layers as possible to make it as difficult as possible uh, because they can make money on it. So we got a final statement here from Swolpoke who says, either way, however, these were produced. Beckett, PSA, CGC with the tags really need to start cracking down on autographs. These are one hundred. Uh, these are $1,000 plus mistakes that could have been caught with the right people hired. Agree. Uh, and mistakes are going to be made. But if mistakes are made, uh, then you need to be ready. If you're one of these grading companies that wanted to authenticate autographs, 
if there's more proof leading to this thing is not real than there is real, we've seen this oh, the stupid CGC cases that are like signature not witnessed or whatever. It's just like don't grade there's the there's always an option to not grade it. I get it. They're all in, they all want to they they want the monthly numbers so they can dick measure. They can say, oh yeah, we're number two, we're number one. Look how many cards we graded. If you have services, if you're upfront, if you're honest, if you're transparent, if you're not caught with your pants down trying to make a bunk every time, you do the honest thing. People are going to understand that mistakes are made. You when you grade any amount of cards, even if you're one of the little baby companies, other than the ones that popped up and now disappeared. After the pandemic, the free tendy era for grading companies. Just do just do what's right. If you do what's right over and over again, and if you own up to your mistakes, and if you're cracking down on bad actors, I'm going to be making videos praising you. Yes, I'm going to point out when you make mistakes. Yes, I'm going to point out when you're wrong people, when you're doing it for the buck, and you're not doing what's right for the customer. I'm going to call it out. People should. Whether you love a grading company or not, I don't care if you have PSA tattooed on your balls because you're the biggest fanboy of all time. If they don't do the right thing, you should be upset with them. You should be calling, you should be, you should be the more upset that I am that they're not doing the right thing for their customers because if you have money in it, them doing the right thing, their na the, the grading company's names are all they have. If they tarnish their name over and over and over again, instead of doing what's right. A lot of it is, is very forgivable. The mistakes can be made. But if you don't fix the mistakes, and if you're not preventing those mistakes from happening, and if you're just like ignoring or sweeping stuff under the rug, it's, it doesn't, it's not a good look. And yes, they all do it. They've all done shady stuff for the buck. But is it not is are people not just waiting for one of these companies to just do the right thing every time? And I'm not saying don't make mistakes. You can make mistakes, but you you do the right if, if you're consciously trying to do the right thing at all times, and not the right thing to make money, the right thing for your customers. I would think that that would open people's eyes to what's going on here. All right, join the Discord. That's all I got. Rant over. Be careful out there if you're an autograph collector. It's it's a scary spot. It is being exploited to the max at this point. Join the Discord. See you next time. Bye. Oh, also, the link tree. Click the codes. Go to Card Market. All those places. Get some stuff that you want to buy anyway. Support the channel. And no extra charge to yourself.